Yo, so today I wanted to discuss min-maxing in Cyberpunk 2077 and provide some advice based on my personal experience for improving every kind of build. I've often heard complaints about enemies being bullet sponges, but in my opinion, that's only because they're using underleveled gear, are underleveled themselves, or simply aren't building correctly. The first thing to discuss would be, is it even necessary to min-max in Cyberpunk 2077? The short answer to this is no, not yet. In my first playthrough, I had a better boss fight experience not maximizing my damage, as when you do, you can kill bosses way before they finish their dialogue lines, and it can in fact take away from the satisfaction of defeating a powerful enemy. However, knowing how to improve your build helps with making the game easier if you're finding it too difficult, making enemies less of these supposed bullet sponges, and of course, min-maxing is definitely fun in a second or third playthrough. Deleting every boss in a few seconds makes the game interesting, as well as clearing mass groups of enemies really quickly. Another important note is that if they release a higher tier of difficulty, especially one where the enemies and quests scale to your level, there's a chance that min-maxing won't make things too easy. Alright, so before I provide some tips, there are a few disclaimers that I have to go over. Number one, it's currently January 2021, so keep that in mind that a lot of advice may change as new content and patches are released. Second thing is that there are many bugs and inconsistencies at the moment. I haven't personally been able to test everything, so keep that in mind. I do, however, encourage people to test out some of these recommendations themselves like for example a lot of the mods or perks. However, I'll include some discussions of these throughout. Since this video will be quite long, I'll add some timestamps in the description. The topics I'll be discussing will be attributes and perks, improving your damage, crafting and item scaling, weapon and armor mods, cyberware, hacking, utility, and some final notes and boss discussion and then after all of that, I'll also have some sample footage of killing bosses. Before I get into optimizing your damage, the first thing I'd like to remind people of are a couple of basic facts about attributes and perks. Currently, attributes cannot be reset or respect in the game without the use of external tools. So it's quite important to have a rough idea of your endgame build before you dive into min-maxing. Perks, fortunately, have a method of resetting them at the cost of 100k eddies, which is not too expensive once you've hit level 50 and you've accumulated enough wealth. This means that you can spend perks for utility and change the spread of your perks at a later time. However, the 100k eddies is fairly costly at the beginning of the game, so be sure to choose wisely at the beginning. The next thing I'll be discussing is general tips for improving your damage. The first and most important thing to know about damage is that all damage types, that is weapons, axe, cyberware arms, and grenades will eventually be able to crit. For hacks and grenades, You'll need access to specific perks to be able to crit with them, but the rest of the weapons can crit early on without specific perks. Dealing critical damage at its base is an increase of 100%. Both crit chance and crit damage can be increased via perks, attributes, leveling up your skills, some weapons will have it as stats, cyberware, cyberware mods, and lastly, armor mods, at least the two of them that work. Crit chance is a huge DPS increase and can make enemies no longer be those supposed bullet sponges. Logically, the first thing you should be aiming for when increasing your DPS is increasing your crit chance to hit as close as possible to that 100% mark. Now obviously, with some weapons, it's more difficult to get the, to that 100% mark. Therefore, knowing what weapons you'd like to use helps with your endgame build, 
However, in the early to mid game, guns have very little or no base crit. Early game options for crit chance. The first and easiest crit chance that you can get is 10% from the Cold Blood skill progression. To progress this skill, you need to have at least one perk assigned to Cold Blood. After that, you can easily get another 5% as an I mod from Victor. And the third good area to get an additional 15% crit is the clothing mod for Tuna. So in total, that's at least 30% crit that applies to all damage types as it shows up on the stat page. I've gotten this 30% crit as early as level 7. The first Fortuna mod that I found was on an Arasaka soldier in the heist at the end of the prologue. Okay, so mid and late game options for increasing your crit chance. I will also list some other methods of increasing crit chance and crit damage that apply to all damage types. Maximizing your crit chance and getting as much crit damage as possible on the stats page will allow you to use any weapon or even fists decently. First method is putting a tribute point into reflexes for crit chance or cool for crit damage after the initial three. And perks like From the Shadows in Stealth and merciless in cold blood. Perks in the cool tree have other conditions, so be sure to check these out before investing into it. If you enjoy hacking and go into the intelligence tree, at attributes levels 15 and 16, you could have an additional 25% crit chance from the limbic system cyberware and a big 45% crit damage upgrade from the visual cortex support cyberware. In my opinion, aside from the hacks themselves, this makes intelligence a really strong option for an overall damage increase to all types of damage. In theory, there would be other good mods aside from the Fortuna, which is the 15% crit chance, and the Bully, which is the 30% crit damage, that would be good, such as the Deadeye mod, but they don't work at the moment. From there, crit chance can be maxed from either the weapons themselves, weapon mods, leveling skills, perks, and attributes. Once again, I'd like to remind people that some weapons have a huge amount of crit chance and crit damage on the weapon itself. So be sure to re-roll the weapons until those things show up if you need them. There are also other multipliers such as headshot damage, charge damage, ricochet damage, and specific weapon modifiers as well. So make sure to check those out for what specific build you decide to go with. There are also damage over time conditions that can be inflicted on enemies as well. Again, some of these modifiers are based on making sure that the enemies are inflicted by those conditions. These are generally restricted to specific weapons or hacks or grenades, so I won't be discussing these as much, but they are important when min-maxing. As far as I'm aware, these all stack. All these extra modifiers or multipliers all stack. However, I haven't tried everything, so keep that in mind. Make sure to create a save before you spec these things up and test them yourself. Crafting. In the next section, I'll be discussing crafting and save scumming, or re-rolling and iconics. Crafting is probably the strongest tree for maximizing damage and slightly improves defense as well. The question is, why iconics? All iconics have additional attributes or special effects described in a little paragraph under the stats. These additional attributes are generally super strong and depending on the weapon may be a significant upgrade to their non-iconic legendary counterpart. Additionally, some of the effects are not exactly reflected in the stats. However, they are mostly found in rare or epic forms. So to upgrade them from there, you'll have to recraft it in its legendary form. 
Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, save scumming or reloading is the only way to get some iconics with the stats you would prefer. To explain further, you need to know that there are three types of iconics. The first type of iconic is found as a crafting recipe. If the iconic is found as a recipe, then you can craft as many copies of that iconic weapon as you want. This means that you don't necessarily need to save scum to get the perfect stats or attribute points. However, it does mean that you need to craft multiple types, so it can be quite costly. The second type of iconic are mainly found as weapons and are probably the most common type of iconic you can find. The iconics found as weapons are limited so that you can only have one of these at any time. And when recrafting them at a higher rarity, so let's say you find it at the epic level and then you want to change it to be a legendary variant, it will consume the lower tier. Okay, some of them you'll find as rare or blue, then you can upgrade it to epic, and then from epic to legendary. This effectively means that you'll have to save scum to get the perfect stats that you want to for those legendaries. The third type of iconic are ones that cannot be recrafted as legendary. I'm unsure if this is intended, but an example of it would be the Lizzie pistol, which is found as a rare and can be recrafted as an epic. However, there is no legendary version of it. For this, I'll be demonstrating some of my favorite iconics, the Problem Solver and the Breakthrough. The Problem Solver is an example of an iconic that is found as a weapon and can only be recrafted once, as it consumes the lower tier of the item with no way of remaking it. You'll also notice while crafting that the damage shown on the preview can change when crafting or just by clicking on the weapon. I'm unsure if it actually impacts the outcome of the crafted weapon, but I'll showcase it anyway. The first version I crafted had ricochet damage, but I'd prefer crit damage instead, so I need to reload to recraft it again. I recommend that you save constantly as you're crafting these one-time legendary iconics so that you can see the different outcomes for the stats that are available and then you can just reload the save of the stats that you prefer. On to the breakthrough. The breakthrough, however, is an example of an iconic crafting recipe and can therefore be crafted multiple times. I've chosen to showcase the breakthrough because it's a tech weapon and tech weapons have a ton of multipliers. I originally crafted this first breakthrough before specking up the damage increase to crafted weapon perks. So I'll be aiming to get the weapon with the same stats as my current one, but they should be slightly better. So as you can see in this first batch of 15 weapons, I didn't get the modifiers that I wanted, so I'll redo another 10 and see if I get one.
as you can see, I found one with the same modifiers that I had on my original one. There are two perks which increase weapon damage and stats, Cutting Edge and Field Technician. I believe you need to have them specced up before crafting them for them to apply. If you decide to craft legendaries before level 50, you can upgrade them, but that may be costly. I believe the upgrade cost increases each time you level it. Therefore, it is currently a good idea to use weapons that have crafting recipes while leveling up, and then upgrade the one-time iconics to legendary at the level when you decide to finish that particular playthrough, or when you hit level 50. However, this depends on when you decide to complete the endings of the game, and that can change for each person. For example, I recently completed the secret ending, the Don't Fear the Reaper ending at level 23. So that's when I decided to fully upgrade and craft the iconic legendaries that I wanted. Okay, the next section is looking at defensive stats and armor. Depending on your build and play style, you may not even need to select armor based on stats or defensive capabilities. For example, if you are a hacker or use tech weapons, you rarely if ever get hit and can defeat the majority of enemies through walls. Additionally, with enough DPS, you can delete most bosses in 10 seconds or less. This means that depending on your build and the amount of damage you deal, you can just fashion however you want, rather than going for stats. However, I'll go over methods to increase your defense anyway, as it's more important for close range builds. The first thing that I'll discuss is legendary armor and item scaling. This is also important if you don't spec into crafting at all, or those without enough damage. Some of the items in the world will scale to a higher level, as well as they have RNG with the rarity, available mod slots, and the mods that are found in those mod slots themselves. I've noticed that items can be in two pools of rarity. Either it can have a pool of common to epic rarity, that is white, green, blue, or purple, or it can be in the epic or legendary pool, which can just show up as purple or orange or legendary. These scaling armor and weapons can be found in containers, chests, or lockers, etc. As long as it's in one of those containers. What you will be aiming for with legendaries with armor is the maximum amount of mod slots. From my understanding, the inner and outer torso can have up to four slots, while the rest of the pieces can have up to three slots. You can also buy legendary crafting recipes for armor from the one armor merchant in Haywood and the two armor merchants in the city center or clothing stores. However, there's a bug with this, so it's important to know that after talking to the merchant for the first time, the recipes will no longer be available. This is a super annoying bug. So to work around that, you have to spam reload to get those recipes you want all in one purchase. I think you can get up to four or five legendary crafting recipes appearing in the merchant at any one time. Hopefully they fix this bug soon. Okay, so I've mostly talked about crafting stuff, so I'll briefly go over upgrading. Upgrading, as a friend explained it, you have to consider the armor that you craft or weapons to be one level below the current level that you're at. And then you can upgrade it to hit your level. So for example, if you're level 50 and you craft an item, it will be at level 49 and then you have to upgrade it to 50. This is restricted to crafting items. However, in the open world, there will be a whole range of varying levels. Generally, what you'll see is certain areas will have a cap as to how high level the items can be from that area. Either that or the range is buggy and just doesn't scale to your level completely. Last note that I want to add on here is that there are legendary boss drops 
guaranteed legendary boss drops from the story related bosses. The spoilers ahead, I'm going to list the amount of legendaries that drop from the specific bosses. So for Royce and Placide, they each have one piece of legendary armor, while Sasquatch and Oda can have two pieces of legendary armor or another weapon. Once again, with these legendary bosses, saves coming or reloading and killing the boss again is necessary to get the desired pieces as well as the maximum slots. This means that if you want to have a specific type of clothing or piece of armor that you're selecting for style rather than stats, or you want both stats and style, you may have to level to a high enough level where you can at least roll legendary loot from those bosses. The next area that I'm going to cover is crafting modifications for your weapons and your armor. After you have the armor and weapons that you want with good mod slots available, you'll want to slot mods into them. A tip for crafting mods is that providing you have the crafting spec, the mod will be of a random rarity when you craft it. Be aiming for the epic versions of these mods. Majority of mods are not legendary, so keep that in mind. During your playthrough, if you've noticed the armadillo mod, you may have noticed that the majority of the defensive armor that you get comes from these armadillo mods rather than the armor itself. Each armadillo mod stacks and can provide 240 armor per modification. As mentioned earlier, this means that you can focus on trying to get armor with the largest amount of mod slots available rather than anything else. Also, if you don't want to hit the thousands and thousands of armor, or if you don't need it, you can just select armor based on your fashion preferences rather than pure stats. So for example, maybe a thousand armor is enough for you to just not get one shot. If that's the case, then all you need is one or two legendary pieces with max slots, and then the rest can be epic or lower rarity. Or you can just not wear armor. For example, maybe you don't want to wear a beanie or a hat. It's not entirely necessary. So it's worth experimenting with what level of armor you need to feel safe or to play the style that you want to. As mentioned earlier, you'll most likely want one mod slot for Fortuna, the 15% crit chance, and one mod slot for the Bully mod for the 30% crit damage. Currently, these do not stack. They may look like they stack, but it doesn't seem to actually impact the damage that you deal. Additionally, I'm unsure if the other offensive mods worked or are bugged, but I'm pretty sure the Deadeye mod doesn't work and the percentage damage increase to moderate or high enemies also doesn't work, but they're worth testing and again try to keep up with the patch notes because this might change later on. For weapon mods, they mostly function the same as armor mods in terms of crafting them, having that random rarity that I mentioned earlier. Typically, I opt for crunch mods, which increase the damage by 8 per mod. This mod is extremely strong for multi-pellet guns or for guns with fast fire rates. In theory, the crit damage mod would also be really strong, so that may be worth testing out as well. Personally, the guns that I've used, crunch has been better. Okay, the next section is cyberware. The strongest part of cyberware by far is the operating system. Whether it be for hacking, slowing time, or going berserk, the OS is ridiculously strong for both offensive and defensive purposes. After the operating system, as previously mentioned, I believe the intelligence ones with the crit chance and the crit damage to be the strongest cyberware offensively, while defensively, Double Jump is excellent for traversing the city or obstacles, and it provides you with a nice way to avoid different enemy attacks. For example, AoE attacks like grenades or rocket launchers, or melee attacks that charge at you, or 
any sort of things, double jump is excellent for defense. All the cyberware arms just seem to be really strong. The gorilla gloves make beat on the brat fights really easy without any street brawler perks. Links to that in the description where I do that. In terms of defensive cyberware, it depends on what you decide to spec up. If you decide to use body, for example, then second heart and biomonitor are really OP, so I recommend those. I have a legendary cyberware cheat sheet that is useful for finding out which ones you can choose from, so a link for that in the description. All right, the next section is going to cover hacking. Hacking seems ridiculously strong in the game, especially when dealing with large groups of weak enemies and just stealth killing. You can sort of synchronize different hacks so that they go off at the same time and that way you effectively stealth kill everyone before they can spot you. Hacking also offers some incredible utility in disabling enemies and even bosses. Furthermore, legendary hacks also have incredible passives, both defensive and offensive in nature. For example, short circuit damage applies whenever you crit with any weapon or reboot optics. When you use breach protocol, all enemies that are hit with it get hit with an optic jammer or are blinded for a few seconds after spotting you, causing them to be blinded. However, compared to weapons, Hacks are relatively weak on bosses that have suicide protection. So one of the most important things to know with hacking is that when I was playing with my friends, we noticed that you can get legendary hacks without crafting them from high level access points. My assumption is the higher the intelligence requirement on the access point, the higher level of reward in terms of free hacks and materials that you'll get from it. This means that you don't have to invest as many attribute points into intelligence to craft those legendary hacks, and you can just get them from high level access points. Next section I'm going to cover is money and income. So just a few tips for earning money in Cyberpunk. In my opinion, if you aim to hit level 50 and do a sort of completionist playthrough where you do all the side missions and NCPD things, generally money isn't an issue and there's no need to do any exploits or additional farming methods. You'll get over 2 million eddies, maybe closer to 3 or 4 million. So you might not need to do anything extra there. First of all, the drop rarity as well as the stats on the weapons that you find off random enemies generally increase as you level. Therefore, if you pick up items that the enemies drop and you sell them, your amount of money or eddies that you get will grow as you level. This is of course providing that you're killing the enemies which scale to your level. Some enemies don't do that, keep that in mind. Some other tips for getting money, First method of getting money quite easily is via access points. And you should make sure to pick up the advanced data mine perk, which doubles eddies acquired from these access points, providing that you invest enough points into intelligence. Additionally, a perk to avoid is scrapper. After finishing the game, I had roughly 300k worth of 750 eddy junk items in my inventory. I had more than enough money to buy all the cars and any cyberware I wanted. If you play without these, then you'll probably need to do some additional farming throughout. Utility skills are highly valuable in Cyberpunk as it allows you to complete quests faster, but at what point is it actually worth sacrificing damage to get quality of life or utility based perks. In my opinion, when you can delete all the bosses in under 10 seconds, some of them 2 seconds, without taking damage at all, that's a good point to start considering, considering opting for utility. Some good utility quirks would include any increases in reload time or movement speed increases help with hacking and crafting cost reduction. Keep in mind that you can always respec these perks later in the game at the cost of 100k eddies. 
Final notes. Currently, min-maxing is not necessary to play the game, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, and unfortunately can in fact take away from the satisfying experience of defeating a tough boss. However, bosses have some interesting mechanics and additional defenses that would certainly be interesting if they are made a little bit more durable in the future. Some bosses seem to have some form of protection or scaling features and can reduce the amount of damage you deal to them, but you won't be seeing the same like millions or hundreds of thousand damage numbers that you deal to regular enemies outside. Ultimately, in maxing your build will become more useful as higher difficulty tiers are introduced and more content is released. Just a quick note about the sample footage I'm about to show. If you've seen some of my earlier videos in my first playthrough, I played only specking up attributes and perks if I needed to, and often it was required only for opening doors and conversation choices. I'll now show some of the footage of my second playthrough of deleting the main story bosses using a build with many perks and attributes not specced, but it was mainly because I was unsure if I needed them for the secret ending. On a while. Time for a break. Fuck! Johnny Silverhand sends his regards. 